Hello everyone, welcome back. And in today's video, we are going to be solving three problems from fluid statics from the build your understanding section. So we'll start our discussion with problem four. Okay guys, so in this question, we have a trapezoidal tank and each wall of the tank is of mass M. And it's given that it's completely filled with water. And at some point of time, the front and the back walls are removed. So just this wall and the back wall over here, they're both removed and we are required to find the acceleration of the tank immediately after the removal of the walls. Okay guys, so uh, the two walls that are removed are the front wall and the back wall. In the tank, uh, the only walls that are left are the, these two side walls and the base wall, okay? So the mass of the tank is now 3m. Okay, so water will now apply force on the side walls, right, and on the base wall. But the force which will be responsible for the tanks tank to move will be the force that the water applies on these side walls over here. So let's try to determine the force that water applies on this wall over here. So we know whenever we have a surface, we can find the force acting on the surface by finding the pressure at the centroid of the area, right? Let's call it as C. So if you want to find the force on this wall over here, it would simply be equal to the pressure at the centroid times the area of the surface. Now the height of the centroid is h by 2 from the free surface. So the pressure at the point C will be rho g h by 2. And the area of the surface is going to be h multiplied by. Now this dimension over here is not provided. So let's just take it as L3. So it will be h multiplied by L3. And by symmetry we can say that uh, the force that the water applies on this surface over here will also be same in magnitude. And the direction of the force is uh, going to be perpendicular to the surface. Now, uh, now the point of application is actually at a distance of h by 3 from the bottom, but it's not necessary in this particular case uh, because we don't have to do any torque analysis, right? Okay, so this is how the top view is basically looking like. The forces are going to be perpendicular to the wall, or perpendicular to the surface of the wall. So let's call this angle as theta and let's try to complete this triangle. This distance over here, guys, it will be equal to L2 minus L1 divided by two. So if this is F, it'll make angle theta with the vertical. Okay guys, so now if I want to write the acceleration of the tank in one step, it is going to be two F cos theta divided by the total mass of the system, which is three M, right? And the direction of the acceleration will be, uh, you could say in the downward direction as seen from the top view. And after calculation, the acceleration of the tank comes out to be this particular value. So now let's move on to the next question. Okay guys, so in this problem, we have a sphere whose volume is V and it is placed in a vessel that is filled with water. A side wall of the vessel is inclined at an angle of theta with the horizontal and the container is moving with the leftward acceleration of A. So we have to find the normal force between the bottom of the vessel and the glass sphere. Okay guys, so now just consider a container uh, that is filled with water and it is accelerating with some acceleration A in some arbitrary direction, okay? So, and let's say that we have some object inside here whose volume is V, which stays at rest relative to the fluid, okay? So uh, if I want to uh, isolate this body and, you know, draw its FBD, well, one will be obviously the force of buoyancy, right? And let's uh, say it's in this particular direction. Then we have the weight of the object, right? Let's call it as FW. And these two are the only forces that are acting on the body. And it is accelerating in, let's say, some arbitrary direction. So now if we want to write its uh, F equals MA equation, then we can say in the vector form, FW vector plus FB vector equals rho V, which is the mass of the body times the acceleration vector, okay? So so if from here we can easily see that the Bowen force vector uh, equals rho v a vector minus rho v g vector. Just remember that if the container is uh, accelerating in some arbitrary direction, just uh, there will be one more component of Bowen force that is rho v a vector. In so this will be in parallel to the a vector and it'll its magnitude is rho v a. Or you could even say that uh, the the Bowen force is opposite to the g effective vector. So if I want to write the g effective of the situation, I have to reverse a and g and let's say the resultant vector is in this direction. So the buoyancy force will be in this particular direction. Okay, now let's move on to solving our problem. So all we have to do is like draw the FPD. Let's say the, the normal from the ground, let's call it as n1, which is also what we have to find. And then we also have n2 from the side wall. So I'm gonna just translate these forces and put them at the center 
just so that it's easier to resolve these forces. Okay guys, so uh, one more thing, the, the angle between these two walls are considered to be theta, right? So the angle between their normals is also theta. So even this angle will be theta. Okay, so then now the next force is going to be the weight of the ball, which is going to be V rho G. Okay guys, so now let's mark the buoyancy forces. So buoyancy force as uh, we can break it down into two components, one will be in the direction, opposite to the direction of G, which is going to be V density of water times G. And one will be in the direction of the acceleration, which is going to be V rho W times A. Okay, and uh, if we, and as we are solving it in the containers frame, we are going to add a, another minus MA term to the sphere that is going to be V rho A in the rightward direction. Okay, so now all we have to do is write the equilibrium equations. Okay, and, uh, and after solving these two equations, you will obtain the value of N2 as this particular value. So now let's move on to the final question of the day. Okay, so in this question, we have a closed tube whose length is L. It is completely filled with water and it has a small air bubble trapped in it. When the tube is held at an angle theta with the vertical and rotate at a constant angular velocity of omega about the vertical axis through its lower end, the bubble settles at some intermediate position in the tube. What fraction nita of length of the tube is the distance of the bubble from the lower end? Okay guys, so I mean you can think of this problem in multiple ways but, but I'll be just using the idea we discussed in the previous page that was that the, the vector of the buoyancy force equals rho v a vector plus minus rho v g vector. So let's say the intermediary position uh, that these guys are talking about is at a distance of x from the axis of rotation. So we know that at this particular position, the acceleration is towards the axis of rotation and its magnitude is equal to omega square x, right? Uh, so one component of the buoyancy is going to be in this particular direction and its magnitude will be equal to rho v times a vector. So there'll be, I'll just simply multiply rho v into this and this is the buoyancy force acting on the air bubble in the leftward direction. And there will be one component opposite to g vector, uh, which is going to be rho v. So I'll clean this diagram up a bit. Okay guys, so these two are the components of the buoyancy force that acts on uh, the bubble. Guys, when we talk about bubbles, they're usually very lightweight. Okay, so, so we are going to be neglecting its weight. Okay, so basically, uh, if you observe something, when it was over here, this component of the buoyancy force was very small, right? And as a result, the rho vg component was dominating. And as a result, the bubble traversed up the tube. But as we are talking about the intermediary position, what will happen here? So now if you want the bubble to stay at rest relative to the rod at this particular position, we have to ensure that the resultant of this buoyant force must be perpendicular to the rod. That way, there is no tangential component of the buoyancy force along the tube. And hence, as a result, the bubble is at rest relative to the rod. Okay, so as this is perpendicular to the rod, the horizontal angle will be theta. So we can say, okay guys, so, um, and they were talking about the fraction of the length. So let's call this length as neta L. So X is simply going to be neta L sine theta, right? Uh, and after substituting for the value of X, you'll get neta as this particular value. So that was it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed the session, do like and subscribe and you can comment down if you have any doubts. That's it. Thanks for watching.